this is the rag doll posture and this is the traction test which is being performed. Now, Fenichel says that floppy infants who lie motionless, eventually they develop flattening of the occiput and loss of hair on the portion of scalp that is constantly in touch with the crib sheet where the child is placed. And when placed in a sitting posture, their head will fall forward, the shoulders will droop and the limbs, they will hang limply. And the traction response in examination is the most sensitive measure of postural tone in a newborn. This is a very, very important thing. And how the traction test or traction response is elicited, I have just shown you a picture. Now, when you will suspect and how you will evaluate these children clinically? First of all, there will be the so-called parental complaints or chief complaints where parents will complain that the child is floppy. They will not say floppy. They will say, when we try to lift the child, he easily slips from the hands. Then the child does not move limbs much even when the child is awake. There will be motor delays noticed by the parents. And there will be frequent falls provided beyond one year of age. So many of these children, they may no longer be in infancy, but retrospectively, you can see that probably floppiness was present in the first year of life itself. And uh, when you take history, you will inquire about the age of onset and the rapidity of progression. Uh, you will ask about history of any feeding issues and recurrent pneumonias. In case feeding issues and recurrent pneumonias are present, you will suspect a neuromuscular disorder. Antenatal history you will take if the, there is antenatal history of reduced fetal movements on oligohydramnios, SMA type 0 or SMA type 1 should be suspected. Isolated motor developmental delay indicates either a neuromuscular or a muscular disorder. You need to ask about the details of family and perinatal history. Make a proper pedigree chart. Three generation pedigree chart is always indicated in these patients. And uh, on examination, you will watch for facial dysmorphism. You will find that patients with congenital dystrophies, uh, congenital muscular dystrophies, they will have facial dysmorphism. You will also find that children who are having a myotonic dystrophy, they will have a inverted V-shape upper lip along with the typical faces which we have discussed, which I have discussed in a separate standalone video. So inverted V-shaped upper lip, all these things will be clues for the underlying diagnosis in a floppy child. Then alertness, you, babies will be alert, just that hypotonia will be there, but their mental functions will be normal. They will be indicative of conditions like spinal muscular atrophy. Then you will look at the posture, frog-like posture I've already told you. You will hold the child from axilla and see if the child slips through or not. You will watch for tongue fasciculations, very important point. Tongue fasciculations suggest denervation. Tongue fasciculations are usually seen in children with either neuropathic disorders or in those where progressive denervation is happening, for example, spinal muscular atrophy. Then degree of weakness in the limbs will be elicited and you will try to see whether the weakness is proportional to the hypotonia or it is disproportional. In case it is proportionate to hypotonia, the etiology is likely to be in nerve or muscle. But in case it is disproportionate muscle weakness, you should suspect a CNS disorder or a connective tissue disorder or a metabolic or a systemic illness in the child. Now, pattern of weakness will also give you a clue. In case it is proximal more than distal, you should suspect a muscular disorder. Or on the other hand, if it is distal more than proximal, you should suspect a nerve disorder. There are exceptions to this rule and there is an entity called as myotonic dystrophy, which is primarily a muscular disorder, but it shows distal involvement more compared to proximal. Then you will check for wasting and sensations in the patient. Why do we check for this? Because in case there is only uh, mild to moderate wasting, but and there is no sensory loss, it is suspected to be a muscular disease. In a nerve disease, wasting will be severe and sensory losses will be present. So that will indicate a nerve disease. And you will check for deep tendon reflexes. Deep tendon reflexes will help you in ruling out whether it is an upper motor or a lower motor neuron lesion. Brisk deep tendon reflexes will be indicative of a CNS cause, that is an upper motor neuron lesion. Whereas Deep tendon reflexes, if they are absent or hyporeflexia, if it is present, you should suspect a, a distal disorder. Most commonly, it should be in the muscle or neuromuscular junction or in the nerve fibers. Then facial muscle weakness will be seen in patients with congenital muscular dystrophy as well as congenital myopathy. And you will watch for respiratory movements, whether they are present or not. And you will watch for respiratory movements, whether uh, how uh, spontaneous they are, and how much is the force, whether respiratory efforts are increased, normal or relatively decreased in these patients. Now, what are the causes of hypotonia? 
according to Nelson. Table based upon Nelson with some points added from here and there we will be discussing. Now causes of hypotonia or uh, flaccid infant can be in various forms. First of all, we will talk about the causes which are arising from central nervous system or CNS. CNS causes will show a specific pattern. The pattern of these patients will be, there will be central or axial hypotonia. And in these patients, you will find that deep tendon reflexes will be brisk or exaggerated. And many times you may find that these patients are having cortical thumb. So, presence of cortical thumb usually indicates a central nervous system disorder. What are the typical examples of uh, CNS causes of floppy infant or CNS cause of hypotonia? It will include various types of genetic disorders. It includes uh, affecting the CNS, particularly the chromosomal ones. It will include inborn errors of metabolism. It will include cerebral dysgenesis and it will include trauma. Trauma may happen to the brain or to the spinal cord. The second category of disorders will be motor, the second localization will be in motor neurons. What will be the pattern that you will find in these patients? You will find that there is a generalized weakness. There will be sparing of diaphragm, facial muscles, pelvis and sphincters. Deep tendon reflexes are either normal or decreased but they are not increased in these patients and typical example for motor neuron disease is spinal muscular atrophy. The third category, third cause of hypotonia will be nerve disorders or neuropathies. The pattern of weakness in these patients, you will find that it is a distal weakness. There will be sensory loss in the patient. So, distal weakness along with sensory loss. You will find that there is severe wasting in these patients. And typical example for this will be peripheral neuropathy. The fourth localization will be in the neuromuscular junction. In neuromuscular junction, the pattern will show that there will be fatigability, but easy fatigability will be a feature only in older children. It will not be very frequently found in younger children and there will be involvement of bulbar as well as extraocular muscles in these children. Myasthenia gravis the childhood version and infantile botulism. And then there may be problems in the muscles themselves, the so called myopathies. In these patients, the pattern will show that there is proximal muscle weakness, more than distal, the only exception being myotonic dystrophy. Then these patients will have decreased deep tendon reflexes. They will have joint contractures, particularly in the severe forms. The examples for these will include muscular dystrophies, congenital myopathies, it includes metabolic myopathies, etc. Right? And overall remember that central hypotonia is seen in about 60 to 70 percent cases compared to distal hypotonia which is seen in the remainder of cases. So if somebody asks you which is overall most common, it is central hypotonia arising from the central nervous system and sometimes from the spinal cord which is more common compared to the distal parts in the overall epidemiology if you see. And, uh, also, you need to understand that in central hypotonia, the genetic causes are significantly larger number as compared to the acquired ones.